But when you go out into the world and you see bigger problems that are bigger than you, but you also see that you can be part of a solution. For me, it was kind of just almost self-evident, like, I need to do this. And I didn't necessarily turn into some like goody-goody tree-hugging type, but I just saw that I was wasting my time and that my anger was somewhat self-involved, which is okay when you're young, but it was also timid. It was cowardly, because it's not really confrontational. And so I, uh, you'll laugh, but it's true. Nietzsche, I know, got young men in Nietzsche. But Nietzsche taught me to go after more worthwhile adversaries. And I read, you know, a chunk of his books, the Kaufman translations, not the Hollingdale. And I did get some of it, some good out of it. And that was the main thing I got from Nietzsche was like, pick really good adversaries, ones that can hit back. And I've said that to a few angry political pundits. I'm like, you're picking on the wrong people. Pick on me. Let's, because I will, I will, I will stand here and go toe to toe with you. Mm -hmm. And so I won't name any names. I'm just saying that they, they pick on people who can't hit back. Uh, I, one time I, uh, I advised uh, one right-wing political pundit. I said, um, you, you're up against this person and me and that person and that person. Me, I'm taking on famine. I'm taking on thirst. I'm taking on food and water insecurity and water and airborne diseases globally. And you're taking on that, that guy because he uh, is okay with Bill marrying Tom. I know who rules the roost here. I know who's going after that which can really hit back. And so once you get a taste of that, how, how could you possibly go back to, you didn't like my record, so I have to kick your ass now that you gave me a bad review. It's, it was, it's been impossible for me. And maybe that's just me meeting but when, maturity. But when you're traveling and you see injustice, like if you see- I see it all, I see it in my own area code. I see it everywhere I go. How does it not make you furious? Because I know that I can't change all of it, so I just pick off some stuff I can do, and I do the best I can. I lend my voice and, my, and I give money to organizations who I agree with, and I try and, you know, I'm one guy, so I don't try and fix all of it, because all, all you do is worry, and just, just wait, sit there going, ah, everything is a mess, like it is. But you can clean up that spot and that spot, and if everyone cleaned up a spot, Oh, what a wonderful world it can be. And that's, way, that's how you can get active and make it personal. Like I, 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 I've, and as soon as, yeah, and soon as you can own it and have some ownership of like, I did that. Then all of a sudden, man, you just, it becomes addictive. Giving, being part of a solution, you can't wait for the next opportunity, which I'm sure you understand what I mean. And that's, that's how I deal with some of the really awful things I see. Like in Madagascar, you meet kids. There's no way those kids are alive now. The ones I met in, 2000, in, in 1997 or 98 when I was there the first time. I, I, uh, sorry, the only time I've been to Madagascar. I was thinking of Kenya. Um, in Madagascar, you meet the kids with the, the stomachs are out to here and they don't look good. And you're like, there's no way that kid's hitting 20. And then a week and a half later, you're back in Los Angeles driving to Trader Joe's. Or you go to Haiti and you see the orphans there and some of the stomachs are descended. And four days later, you're back in Miami where it's like breasts that defy gravity, smooth foreheads, and people own these castles. And you're like, wow, I share a planet with that place? It's 90 minutes by plane and I'm going back home. Or when you go to Tibet and you see the Chinese soldiers crushing the dignity of, of Tibetan people and there's some of these most gorgeous humans, the, the elderly are, the lines in their face, the strength in their hands, they're just, they're begging for a portrait. There's beautiful, gentle people, and the Chinese are, are just destroying that culture. And you see it, and you weep, and you get on a plane, and you go home. And so it's very easy to feel like a schmuck, unless you do little things here and there. Otherwise, all you feel is sadness and futility. I can't do it. I got to be able to move on something. Sorry for tying a long tail onto that kite, but thanks for asking.